have the MVE9215, which is a portable video endoscope, um, predominantly for use in upper, upper respiratory work in equine. Um, you see there are several subtle differences here between this and your normal video scope or in standard fiber scope. Here's the, the main scope itself. So you have the control body, you have the patient tube. Crucially, it doesn't have the big heavy umbilical cord which needs to be connected to uh, the light source. This is actually a light source here, which is a 10 watt light source, which actually screws onto the, onto the light guide post there. It's super bright, it's an LED, which gives you really, really good image quality when you view it through the viewing screen. Here we have the waterproof cap, which actually screws onto here. And this is for use in uh, leak testing the scope prior to a procedure and also uh, connecting to the scope post procedure uh, before we actually submerse it in any fluid. Um, here we have the small viewing screen which attaches to the end of the scope which we'll go through in a few seconds and we have a cleaning kit here. Uh, before we proceed any further, uh, as with all endoscopy, um, it is very, very uh, important that you actually leak test the scope prior to use, purely and simply to make sure that you don't have any leaks in the scope. If the scope leaks, i.e. when the pressure drops uh, from the leak tester, I would strongly advise against using the scope. Uh, on this particular model, what we're going to do, we're going to attach the leak tester to the end of the scope, simply press and twist and pump the scope up around about 160 on the gauge. So we leave that to set off for maybe 30 seconds or so. Um, but what is important is that we move the scope through all four angles. So you go all the way forward, all the way back, all the way forward, all the way back on both the wheels. If that doesn't drop, then that simply means that your scope is leak proof. So it's not going to, it's not going to cause any damage. If you had a leak, what would you would see is the pressure would drop significantly quite quickly and it would drop all the way to zero. If that happens, I would strongly recommend that you ring the office and seek advice from there. And please, if you can avoid it, do not use the scope. Once you've carried out the leak test, uh, it is important to make sure that there is no pressure left in the scope. You don't want to be using the scope um, with it under pressure. A short term it won't do much damage at all, but long term it will put a strain on any seals and joints which are in the control body of the scope. So pressure down to zero, remove the leak tester and then unscrew the waterproof cap. Now underneath here you will now see exposed are the electronics. The electronics, what we're going to do now is we're going to attach the, the small viewing screen. Right, here we have the small viewing screen. Uh, and once we turn this on in a few seconds, you'll be able to see a live image on the screen. Through this little screen here, we can actually record uh, videos and stills. We can also perform the white balance operation as well. Now what is important uh, when we're attaching and detaching this little screen from the body of the scope, on the back there is a collar. That collar must be pulled down to engage and disengage the scope from the scope body itself. So by pressing down, attach it to that and release. That will click on to the end of the scope. When we come to release the, the, the um, the screen simply pull the collar back and detach it and therefore that exposes the electronics again. Um, once we have the, the, the viewing screen attached first turn on at the side to the on position and then press the power button on the front. As you can see you get a very nice welcome screen and it will actually go to a live screen. What I want to go through first of all is to make sure that it is set up in the correct language. Um, to do that what we do is you press menu and then we scroll down using these keys here and you tend to go to maybe three or four down and press that, press it again, now cut it. 
Okay, once you turn the front screen on, you may see it's actually in Chinese, which is not very helpful at all uh, when you come to access the screens. So if you simply press this button here, select English and press, press that little arrow key there. It now sets everything up in, in English, as you can see. For date and time, you go down to the, to the next one using that little key there and press that. It's actually set to the correct date and time here, but you can override that. You can, you can change that wherever you want to. So to change anything at all, you just simply scroll along and then using these keys, adjust, adjust the time to, to wherever you want it. So if we come back off that, you can adjust the standby time if you want to. So you can, it's either going to be five minutes, 10 minutes before it turns off. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to be running the battery, and if you're recording, then you're going to be filling your, your memory card. But uh, quite personally, I just leave it to off and then uh, just drop and change as need be. So to come away from that screen, we simply press menu and menu again, and that brings you back to live screen. So what we do here is we turn the light source on, and as you can see at the tip of the scope, and you can see the light. And what we need to do, we need to white balance it. So we have to tell the screen what color white is. And to do that, we use this key here. So if you put the tip of the scope near something white, either a swab or something really right, and press and hold that button there, it goes to a gray color, which is perfect. And then you can just cup your hand around it or something or take an image. And that gives you the more natural color. Okay, so in order to uh, record images and videos, etc., they're actually stored onto this little micro USB card, which goes into this slot here. So you press it down and just make sure it engages. A little bit fiddly. Okay, so that's said there to SD, which means anything that I record or video now gets saved to that little micro USB card. To uh, record anything at all, we simply press this button here. So if we press that, so to record, we simply press this button here. Just a quick press, and as you can see in the corner up here, there is a red dot flashing, and it's counting down the seconds that you're actually, uh, that's the length of time that you've actually recorded. So to stop, Quick press again, the screen goes clear, and that's actually recorded that image now to the micro SD card. To take a photograph, we press this little button at the back here, and you just simply press it once. And what it does, when I do this this time, what you'll see hopefully is a very, very quick flash of a camera up in this, in this area here. So hopefully you saw that. Uh, that now means that that photograph has now been uh, delivered to the SD card. Now, you can actually play these back immediately if you want to have a quick look. So to do that, you go to Menu, then go to Playback. So you press this little arrow key here, and you can record. You can either play back a video or a photograph. In this instance, we're going to go to Photograph. And we just click it along there, and we have a very nice picture of a doll. Very interesting. So to come away from that, press menu, press menu again, and then you come back to your live screen. What this uh, little device uh, also has, which uh, some of our competitors actually don't have, is the ability to be able to flush the end of the scope. Now, when we say flush, everybody kind of knows what this, that is if we've used endoscopy in the past. That little silver dimple there, there is actually a valve in there. And when we introduce water through the scope, it should actually wash across the lens. So if you get any mucus, any blood or anything like that on, you can actually flush the lens. So what we do here, instead of having a pump, we have a little five mil syringe with a piece of tube attached to it. And it simply presses on to that little post there. And because it's only a 5 mil syringe, it's very light in there. We just use ordinary water. I think you use saline if you wish. And what we're going to do now is to physically press the, the plunger on the syringe, and we should get a nice stream of water 
at the tip of the scope. Okay, so there you go. So that's perfect. So post procedure, um, obviously, if you haven't got time to, to sort of clean the scope immediately, which I do know in practice that a lot of people you don't actually have the time to do that. Crucially, what I would like you to do is to flush a syringe of fluid through the tip of the scope so you get that good jet of water. Wipe the patient tube down um, with one of your, your disinfectant wipes to make sure there's no gross contaminants on there. To turn the, the screen off, press and hold that arrow button there. And again, very polite, it tells you goodbye. And then turn off at the side of the screen. Detach the screen, as we said before. Release by pulling up the collar. Release that and always put your waterproof cap straight on there, purely and simply to cover and to make sure that we protect the, the electronics. The rechargeable battery source, the light source, can just be unscrewed now. And with the leak tester attached, this can be fully submerged into the chemistry for uh, for cleaning purposes. Uh, in order to uh, charge up the screen, there is a battery indicator in the top corner. Once it starts dropping down to say one mark, then I would uh, suggest that you actually um, recharge the screen. In order to do that, it, the screen comes with its own charger, which is a USB, which plugs into a shaving socket. The end of there, there is a, a USB connector, which then connects to the top of the screen. Plug that into the mains and crucially make sure that that's turned to on whilst it's charging. Because if it's turned off, it's not actually allowing any charge to come into the screen. And it could sit there for absolutely ages. You've got to turn it on and it hasn't charged up at all. Um, once you have that onto the on position and it's plugged into the mains, you will, if you press this button here, you will see a battery a sliding battery scale uh, moving across the screen so you know where you are in terms of charging. The light source comes with its own rechargeable battery. It simply goes into there and screws in. And again, because this is an LED, once it starts to deplete, it will just kind of diminish. Uh, and in order to charge, that is the positive. It has like a, a ring and indentation all the way around. So that goes into there like that. Plug it into your mains using your shaving adapter. It goes from red when it's discharged to green when it's fully charged. Right, okay, now comes the part that every veterinary nurse know, that knows that they actually hate. It's actually clean the endoscope once they're finished. This, as I say, is a very, very simple endoscope to clean. Uh, what I've done, I've attached the waterproof cap as previously, pumped it up to 160, and we take it through all of the angles as we did before. So long as that holds pressure, we are now ready to uh, fully submerge the, the scope um, apart from the leak tester into the cleaning fluid. You may well be using the two fluid method, method which is the green, which is uh, an enzymatic, which kills protein, and the yellow, which is the uh, disinfectant. So it depends on which method you have, uh, then you just follow the, the manufacturer's instructions. Okay, so we would leave that outside of the tank. Lay that into your cleaning tub or your sink. What we're going to do now, we're actually going to attach this little cleaning device. This here is just a weight, so that sits in the fluid. This part here, the end of this tube, will fit to where your flushing tube went. So it just very simply flushes onto the end of there. And then what we do with a 30 or a 50 mil syringe, with this submerged, this out of the water, we draw up the fluid and we flush through three or four times. So remember this, this very, very well-known phrase, flush, brush, flush. So we're going to flush the chemistry through and then we're going to brush through with the brush and then flush again. Now, as I say, simply this time we're only going to brush through one port, which is the biopsy port. Take your biopsy cap off. Insert your brush, make sure that the tip at the end of the scope is straight and just push your brush all the way through as you've done previously, no doubt numerous of times, 
with your fibre scope or your other uh, your other type of scope. Once the brush comes through the far end of the tip, there you go. Then you look to make sure there's nothing really bad, there's nothing gross contaminants or anything on there. Then you can bring your, your brush through. If it is dirty and you feel you need to do it again, feel free. There's, there's no limit as to how many times you can do that. And then what you do then is reattach the biopsy cap, draw your fluid through and flush through again. Once you've done that and you're enzymatic, then get rid of the enzymatic and you follow the same procedure without the brushing using the disinfectant. So this time you're just going to flush through the scope and let it sit there for the manufacturer's recommendation. Once you've done that in the disinfectant, get rid of the disinfectant and flush through with clean water. Once you've done that, then you can release the pressure from the leak tester and release that and just hang that up to dry. So you need a suitable hanger or something just to, just to hang it up. Uh, my recommendation is that you don't store it in the case purely and simply because if it doesn't get used for uh, say a week or two or something like that, if there's any fluid left in the scope at all, it could actually be a breeding ground for bacteria. And the last thing you want to do is to introduce this into a horse and just introduce a whole load of bacteria. Um, quite simply, if there are any questions, you can just give the office a ring and speak to one of our technicians and we can talk you through that. Uh, or you can just give your um, account manager a ring and once again, we, we can help you out through that. So hopefully um, you'll enjoy using the, the scope. We, we have sold a lot of these systems now and they're becoming increasingly popular. So enjoy and uh, good luck.